This video is sponsored by Brush Galaxy. Okay, during this tutorial, I'm going to break this slightly spooky looking castle landscape down into steps that are way easier to follow than you might imagine so that you can have a go and amaze yourself. Okay, so as I explained in the intro, I'm going to break this down into steps so that you can follow along, learn the painting process as well as the tools within the app Procreate. Having said that, I don't see any reason why you couldn't use a different app on a different tablet and still follow along. But within Procreate, I am using their default A4 canvas, which is 297 by 210 millimeters at 300 dpi. And their color profile is one of their defaults, and it is the sRGB, the code that ends in 2.1. In terms of the brushes, I'm gonna be using the brushes that come free with the app. So within airbrushing, the soft brush, medium brush, maybe the medium hard brush, with an artistic, I'm going to slightly amend the leatherwood brush, and I'll show you how to do that when we get there. Within inking, I'm going to use the studio pen. Within organic, I'm going to use the rainforest brush, and that will do initially. If I add any more brushes along the way, then I will describe them as we go. In terms of the colors, I have pre-selected a color palette, which again, I may add to, but this was the foundation of the colors. Each of these colors has associated with it a hexadecimal code, and each of these codes is linked down in the video description. You type them into this box one at a time, press enter, and the color appears at the top corner. Then you can just tap the colors together to construct the color palette yourself. Or next to the codes that are down in the description is a link that takes you to my Patreon page, and you can download the color file for free. And that will save you some time. And Patreon is also the place where you can go and support this channel, gain access to exclusive content like extended versions of these tutorials. I'd like to say a massive thank you to those people that have either supported me in the past or are currently doing so. It really enables me to continue doing what I do on this channel. So thank you so much. And with all of that said and done, let's get started. Okay, so now we've got the A4 canvas open. I'm gonna rotate it so it's the portrait orientation, and that should save it in this orientation now too. Go to our colors, first color on the top row, drag from the little circle into the canvas, and it flood fills. I'm gonna stay on the same layer, but I'm going to go to the second color this time. I'm going to go to the soft brush within airbrushing, 20% size, 100% opacity, and just approaching the top, I'm going to do a band of that. Maybe just leave a little section at the top. Then stay on the same layer on the third color, and the lower part of what we've just done, we'll do a band of the third color on the top row. Then we're going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and blur it to about 50%. Deselect. I'm going to go to my layers and create a new layer, layer two. Back to my brushes, we're going to go for the organic rainforest brush. Now I'll just reset it, first of all, then tap on it again. And we're just going to change the spacing from 27%, which is the default, to about 40%. I'm going to go back to the colors. I'm going to choose the fourth color on the top row. And with this brush, I'm going to put it down to about 5% size and about 40% opacity. We'll just zoom in for this top section. And we're just going to run a pass of this. Do this a few times in this upper area. And then release pressure so it kind of fades out a little bit. And then just double it up near the top and go over it a few times. Like so. I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur and just blur that in to about the 10%. Then gonna to switch to the airbrushing soft brush again. Same color, turn the brush size down to about 3% and about 20% opacity. And I'm just gonna lightly start to bring some of this in. In fact, even 20% is a little strong. So let's put it down to about 10. And I'm just gonna start bringing in some flatter, stretched out, cloud formations just subtly into this area as we get closer to that horizon point, which is going to be just about here. But yeah, just bringing it in from the sides predominantly. We want the combinations of textures to work together. We do want to preserve some of the texture from the rainforest brush, but we're just adding in streaks of this cloud that just come in from the side as well. So it's the nice combination. It's on a really low opacity. So we can go over it a few times, just tap it in, move your brush around so it's not completely flat. 
tap it in a few times, have a few kind of broken bits of texture in there in the mix. And up there, perhaps you can have just some bigger clumps that join together. Stay on the same layer, we'll go for the next colour, so now the fifth colour. And we'll do basically the same thing again, just nearer the top. So it's still on 3% size, 10% opacity. And just from these top edges and sides, we're just bringing some more of this texture in a little bit more. Bring it across the top. And then from the other side, have it closing down, shutting down some of the light up here. Tap it a few times. It can be quite untidy and that's fine. It's not really an issue. Turn the brush size up to, well, a bit higher actually, about 10%. Just scribble over this top corner a little bit more, shut down some more of that light and over on this side too. Then we're gonna move along to the sixth color. And again, just clip off some of the light in this corner. Allow it to be really nice and dark up there. Just skim across the top and then shut down a little bit more. Just tapping in that top corner, a little bit too heavy there. So let's just dial that back. Just aim for the the top corner predominantly and it's just giving us a general background texture it's not a particularly detailed cloud and that's absolutely fine go to the layers and create a new layer there's a little n on the blend mode setting we're going to scroll down from normal to add and it will change it from an n to an a we're going to stay on the soft brush with an airbrushing but we're going to change colors i'm going to go for the yellow on the bottom row i'm going to put it down to about seven percent size and about 5% opacity. And just at the bottom here, where the texture of the cloud is running out and becoming thin, we can just add a few streaks of this initially. Again, I don't mind if it bands, then we'll put it up to 15% size and just allow this to kind of bring it all together a little bit. Then we're gonna to switch to the white, third color, put it up to, well, have it about 5% again, but we probably need to turn the, strength of it down from five even lower to about three and we're just adding the two together just to soften out some of that yellow a little bit but also just bring that up a hint more as well so we're using default brushes in this tutorial but if you'd like to bring your art to the next level you could try premium brushes from brush galaxy brush galaxy enables you to unlock over 50,000 premium procreate brushes for a fraction of the price and you can access over 20 different categories such as fur, lettering, nature, animals and many others. So for example at this time of the year, in autumn, in fall, a quick search of leaves gives you page after page of really useful brushes and stamps that you might want to use in your paintings and they can be super helpful. Obviously too we're in the middle of building up towards Halloween and a quick search for that gives you tons of different Halloween themed stamps and brushes to start now and get the first seven days for free. Join thousands of other artists using Brush Galaxy tools to bring that art to the next level. The link is in the comments and in the description. Go to our layers and create a new layer, layer four. Now on this layer, we're going to construct a distant castle for our scene, but it has to be obviously a lot more geometric. To enable us to get some more interesting shapes, a bit more precise, we're gonna use some symmetry tools. So we're gonna to go to the wrench, we're gonna to go to the drawing guide, edit drawing guide and we're going to put the symmetry on within options just make sure it's on the vertical symmetry then we can click done and on this line we're going to go in with the medium hard brush we're going to go for the seventh color on the top row brush down to one percent 100 percent opacity and we're just going to find that center line put a little point on it and then do a line out at an angle until we get a nice beginning of a triangle shape. Then we can just literally draw until the lines meet, hold, and it'll snap. Doesn't matter if it's angled. Drag the color into the center so it flood fills. Zoom up. I'm just gonna do a line cutting up. Now, some of the colors are gonna look lighter against that dark top, but we're gonna move it down anyway. So it doesn't really matter. In fact, we could do it now. We just need to make sure that it's on that symmetry line if we're gonna keep adding to it. So just try to avoid doing that but it is still movable even with the symmetry on you just need to judge it and get it completely on that line just remove that try that again 
now we can see it better. Then I can go to the selection tool, put it on rectangle, and I'm just going to draw a rectangle here. So it almost goes to the edge, then color fill. And it's a little bit off, as you can see, we've got a bigger gap there. So it's not a problem, you just fix that, go back to the selection tool, draw another one a bit closer and have it join up. And it's already still selected to color fill, so it does that automatically for us, which is great. I'm going to go back to the selection tool rectangle and I'm going to draw a bigger rectangle. Try to just judge it by eye, pull it down, try to keep it even, even on both sides like so. We still have the symmetry tool on, so I can take this corner and I'm just going to angle it up slightly. I'm going to go for this bit that sticks out and just make it a bit bolder. Some architectural detail there that just makes it stick out, pops up here. We just add a little line and things that bump out along the way. Just be careful up there. Then a little bump either side of that. Some kind of other little turret thing that sticks up perhaps. Maybe something a little lower down that just angles, slopes downwards and then slopes back on itself. Something like this. Now I can go on that layer and duplicate it. The bottom version. Selection or rather transform, move it, put it on the free form within transform. I can pinch it, reduce it in scale, put it wherever I feel that it will work, pinch it in a bit more. Quite like the idea that it's in a bit of a narrower silhouette. I don't want it as tall, so maybe somewhere down around here. Maybe slide and duplicate that duplication, and then grab the bottom version, transform, move it somewhere else maybe onto the, the other side, but make it quite a lot smaller perhaps. I'm going to move it up, maybe make a smaller version in and around this area. It doesn't need to be terribly precise. When it's just a silhouette, your kind of imagination can figure out the perspective of it and you know, trying to make sense of it a little bit. We'll go to those layers and perhaps we'll just pinch them all together. We still have a symmetry line there, obviously, so we can tap on the layer where it says assisted and turn off the drawing assist. We'll also go to the wrench and turn off the drawing guide. So now that symmetry tool has gone. I'm gonna go with the selection freehand and I'm just gonna think about ways that I can join these up. So I'd quite like to do a line from over here. So I can just do a start again, do a dot, maybe figure out where I want the rest of the roof line on the main building to slope downwards give us some perspective, and then the sloping roof to kick out here as well. And then come down horizontally, come across, and well, we may as well just join it up. And because we still have the color fill on, that's conveniently just filled it for us. Back on the selection freehand again. We've got a sloping roof there, so maybe we go from that top corner and slope it down over here as well. Down again, join it back up. So there to close the loop to fill it, deselect and you can start to see any little anomalies that you're not happy with. You can go in and freehand, sort them out, just do a little line maybe, just to confuse it a little bit, cut it across there. Now you're not going to get straight lines unless you hold so it snaps. So we'll do that and maybe just fill in the remaining gap. I'll go in with the selection again. I'll need to turn the color fill off this time, still in freehand. Just going to draw around one of the turrets, towers, close the loop. Three fingers drag down, copy, three fingers again, paste, and then you've got that on a separate layer. I'm just going to put that on the edge here. I quite like what it does there. And maybe I'll slide and duplicate that version, bottom version, or the top, it doesn't really matter. Transform, move it over here. Just, well, it's on uniform, put it back to free form stretch it, broaden it. Again, you, you don't need to follow this exactly. This is just an example of what you could do. Feel free to do your own version. Play around with some of the shapes. Still on the medium hard brush, might just take the top of this roof line a little bit. I have just something that sticks up here. Maybe a couple of things here, I don't know. Just don't want it to look featureless in some places. Have a good play around with that shape. Okay, I'm quite happy with that generally as a silhouette. So I'm going to merge those different versions together. I'm then going to go to the transform and put it on free form. Actually, no, we'll do a uniform initially, just reduce it in size. Definitely want it sticking up into the sky. 
maybe free form, just squash it a little bit. I think it needs to be a touch flatter. Pinch it in, find the placement that you think works for you. So I definitely want it high up, but not too high. I don't want it up here because you're gonna lose the darkness. I want it to be silhouetted to the light band of the sky there. So that top silhouette needs to look like a real, or top tower rather, looks like, needs to look like an actual silhouette in that position. Something like that. I'm gonna to go to the smudge tool. I'm gonna to put the smudge on airbrushing, medium hard brush, 5% size, 100% opacity, and I'm just going to push this down and extend some of that color across the landscape a little bit. We're gonna have some organic things that blend in with this architecture, but I just need it to sort of merge in with the environment there a little bit. So I'm just pushing it down initially. Then I can put it up to 10% size and push it even further. Push it down, expand it out. Just be a little bit careful there. Okay, I'm just gonna slide and duplicate that layer. And on the bottom version, I'm gonna tap on the N and turn the opacity down to about 30%. And on that bottom version, I'm gonna go again to the smudge tool, this time to the inking, Studio Pen. I'm gonna put this size at around 5% and 100% opacity. And I'm just gonna start pushing up from this edge and it's gonna be quite subtle. And I'm just gonna start pushing up. It's going to create some suggestions of the silhouette of trees and bushes there in the background. Perhaps I could turn the, the layer up a touch from 30, try 40%, just a little bit more apparent, but not too much. And we can just create some branches and break here that's a little bit lighter than the main color that we're gonna see, but it's gonna to add to the mix. Suggestion of organic trees, branches. There's not gonna be much living in this landscape. It's gonna be a pretty desolate looking place, but we are gonna have dead trees, whether that's winter or something else. Don't need to explain, but there you go. Go to the top layer and we're gonna do essentially the same thing. So just a touch up from 5% up to maybe 8%. And this will naturally appear a bit darker because the opacity on this layer has not been turned down. So these will jump forward from the textures we've just created. Just create some kind of wobbly branches, release the pressure of the brush and you'll get thinner lines that kind of wiggle out. I'll zoom in a bit so you can see that more clearly. It's gonna be a subtle background detail, but drag up the color that's already there. And it's already gonna be the, the correct kind of tone and strength of color. If you start mixing other colors over the top, sometimes it can just get a bit confused, but this is gonna be exactly the right tone to match in with the, the perspective and the tone that's already there. So we drag up some of these, just have it kind of branching off literally. Just a few. And it's already starting to build in a real atmosphere, which is great. I'm gonna go and create a layer above. I'm gonna go back to the airbrushing soft brush, back to the colors. I'm gonna use the eighth color on the top row. Brush size at around 4% and around 15% strength. And just along the bottom here, we're just gonna bring in some low lying mist. I'm just tapping it in, moving it across. You can drag a line if you need to, but we do want to keep it from being too flat. So we can drag a line across, sure, but then just tap in a few bits to create the sense of that it's kind of mist that has a bit of movement and disruption. So you can bring that a little bit further down as well. Maybe I'll turn it up to 10% and back down to around 5%. Just tap that in so that extends a little bit more upwards too. Tap it onto the edges. Upwards even. It's generally just softening these elements in, just pushing them back a little bit more even. Maybe we'll even go back to the top version that has the turrets and tower, the castle. Tap on it, put on alpha lock. And then still with the eighth color, 
maybe back down to 5% size, 5% strength, and just tap it into the silhouette a little bit more, break it up a bit, and even go to the ninth color. Especially over at this side, we're gonna have more warmth coming in from the sun that we've not added yet. But just vary it up a little bit. We're gonna to go to our top layer and create a new layer, layer seven. Gonna go in with the soft brush with an airbrushing still. We're gonna go for the first color on the middle row. Gonna put the brush size down to 3% and the strength only at 5% initially. And just at the bottom of this mist section, gonna build in just a piece of land that's nearer to us. Perhaps 5% is a little low. Let's put it up to 10. Let's be bold. And let's put it down to the lowest part of 3% that is possible. And we'll just bring it in to about, well, just short of halfway. Just a few taps. Allow it to become more fragmented. Like so. Maybe, maybe in this section, a little bit of an island out there on its own. Just a few taps in that general area. And then, yeah, more on this side again too. Allow it to kind of collect together into a darker shape, darker mass, like this. You really want to play around with atmosphere. Just scribble over this a little bit, darken it up a touch more, like that. So we're gonna have a sense that there's lots of mist in here, lots of just subtle shapes, really. I'm also staying on this layer, I'm gonna go back to my brushes, the artistic leatherwood brush. I'm gonna reset it. You can see that's how it looks naturally. Tap on it again so we can change it. We're gonna to go to the spacing and put the spacing about 35%. As you can see the visualization there, which means that when we go in with maybe a brush size of 3% and still low, it's around 15%. We can just add this now. I'll do it in this section so you, you can see the texture. It just gives a bit more of a granular texture rather than just having to do all the little points of texture yourself. We can add it with the airbrush effect in combination. and It just builds in more texture. So we'll just sweep that across. And the more you press with it, the bigger and bolder the shapes get too. So you can see a real nice sense of perspective coming in there already. We'll create a new layer, layer eight. We'll go from the first color to the second color on the middle row. And we'll go with our brushes back to the airbrushing soft brush. Should still be at the 3% size and the 10% opacity. And I think I'll go for something a bit bolder, really nice and central. A little bump here. Kind of more middle, middle distance, not quite foreground, but in that nice middle distance area. You can see it in context with the whole canvas. Give it a little bit more of a rise there at the top. Just build in the general shape. Almost like a squashed kind of diamond, rounded squashed diamond shape. If you can understand my point. Um, I'm just going to turn it down from 3 to 2% size. Maybe just a couple. Do another blob in here. It's at a very low opacity, quite deliberately. So that, you know, if you had it too high, and it, some of those brush marks can look really clumsy. We're getting a much hazier, softer effect by keeping it low at the 10%. And it just allows for, you have to be much more deliberate to get something in place. You're not going to get any accidental brush marks so much. And I think just to counterbalance here, I want a nice piece of earth or foreground land jutting in there. So I'm going to put it up to 5% size and I do want it to be a bit bolder. So 20% opacity. I'm just going to start building it in from here. just to get the main bulk of it in there initially, just a kind of wedge shape. And we can just start to tap in and shut down some of the light over at this side a little bit more. I don't like that, let's de delete that. Perhaps we need to go a little less generally. So 15%, just tap in, build in some more texture over at this side. Again, do it more gradually, like I was saying. I'm only pressing lightly and I'm only tapping it in. When I go back to the 10%, it's probably not a bad idea. Push this in and around. Start to merge it together a little bit more. We will add some highlights in here, but it's okay for it to generally start to get darker first. And you can start to see the atmosphere building up. 
and go back in with the highlight colours and really bring out those accents of water, reflection, whatever it happens to be. Okay, we'll go back to the artistic leatherwood brush. We're still on that second colour. We're still on the same settings of size. That's 3% size and 15% opacity. And it's a slightly dark colour we're bringing in again in this lower section. So you can just start to sweep this in. And it really just speeds up that texture process rather nicely. Makes for light work. I'm going to put it up from 3 to 5% and also change the opacity up to 30%. And I'm just going to start building in some of the texture down here as well. And I'm going to add some darker colours. But there's no, no harm in starting to add, add to the sense of perspective. Now if you press lightly you're going to get closer in size to some of the ones we've already added. But when we get down here and we're pressing on more, those sizes of that texture is going to get significantly more and darker. And also by going over it, we're going to get that darker look too. And already, you know, it's just really clever at the way that it, it builds in that perspective, just with that kind of texture. We're not going to leave that texture there very much, but even as is, it kind of works. Go to our layers and create a new layer. Go to our colours, we're going to use the third colour on the middle row. Back to our brushes, airbrushing, soft brush again, turn it back down, this time 2% size and about 15% opacity. And yeah, I just want to be adding some, 15% isn't enough anymore. Let's put it up to 25%. I want this to be more bold. I just want to get a mound in here, definitely approaching the foreground, sharper details in this area. So let's just get a collection of stones, things that are starting to emerge here. Let's let's just really go for it. Let's put this up to 50%. Why not? Get some bolder stones in here. Again, we don't need to particularly detail them just yet. We're just starting to add some rocks, foreground type detail, just some round shapes really that cluster together in a collection. Perhaps we'll put that up to a larger size, 10% back down to 20% opacity and yeah we just need to start building in some darker tone generally it is it is going to shut down some of this texture and that's okay we can go back in with lighter colors and start to build it back in anyway but we definitely need to just play around with our textures start to shut some of it down only to build it back up in a few moments really perhaps we'll go along to the fifth color two percent size 20% opacity and then this is a real nice dark colour now and we're going to have more stones down in this more foreground area so I'm just doing swirls around shapes to build in perhaps we'll even go up to around 40% should work and there's some round shapes and some smaller ones too Bring some of them more into the center area, no harm in that. And then again in these corners we're just going to have to shut, shut down some of this lighter blue. Again, so we'll put it up to 10% size, just begin to tap in. Now it's quite strong at 40% so just be a bit careful. Perhaps we'll turn it down to 15%, turn the size down to 5%, just start to take it a, a touch further back. Bring it across there a little bit, the bottom, yeah, just softening it all together a little bit more. So we've got that good range of tones now that is starting to assist in the general look and effect of it. So we're building in the general look now and we need to go backwards to our different layers. So we did add some tree details on where was it? It was the tower layers. Then we added a mist on layer six and then layer seven is where we need to go back to now. With the smudge tool, tapping it again with the inking studio pen. 8% size, 100% opacity. And we'll go back to the detail on that layer. Whoops. And again, we're just going to be a bit more careful than we were in the background. But we need to build in some trees, some branches that really just drag up from these areas and use the tone that's there, use the colour that's there so it's not going to 
not work. It's going to be exactly the right kind of color that's going to fit in that location. And already just a, a couple of details like that and you can really start to see how it can work. Wiggle a few lines in. Now you don't necessarily need to add it like a huge amount of it in every area. You can have some areas where it's a little bit more sparse and then other areas where you get some bigger shapes perhaps. You decide. If you wanted to turn the opacity, the strength down a little bit, 70% or even less, 40, you can get some more subtle, smaller details in there as well. So as well as the bold shapes, if you just want some really fine branches and things that are, are there, but they're not kind of shouting out, then that 40%, you can add more of that in the mix. I'm going to put it back up though, 100%. I like the bold shapes in the mix too. You can generally push the lines a little bit further when you've got it up to 100. Maybe I'll put the size up to 30. Go for something really bold in there as well. Just twisting off out of frame, back down again, more towards the 10%. And then where were we before? We were about 8%, weren't we? So for some finer branches there too. Then we go back up to, or up to layer eight, still with the smudge, inking, studio pen, choose your settings. So I'm gonna put it up to 10% size, 100% opacity. And then yeah, we've got some slightly more foreground. Just choose your shapes a little bit more carefully perhaps because they are gonna be more noticeable here. Perhaps I'm not gonna to do too many on this because as we get further away, you get this sense of things condensing and you get more of them but when you've got an isolated feature like this you don't actually need to do as many as you might think so we'll just do a couple from this section and then well I'm going to have something a lot bolder actually I'm going to put it up to 50 percent and I'm going to have a nice tree coming in here and why not I'll just push this further up into our frame and have it twisting off Then I can push this around too. Remember, if you press lightly on this brush, you're going to get thinner branches. Then we can put the brush size lower down, at maybe say 15%. And we can just control some of the finer shapes, the smaller branches that may grow out from there then. Again, just yeah, play around with some of the foreground details. Maybe we need another bolder shape in here, so up to 30% or so. So I am trying to use the smudge tool for the majority of adding trees, but obviously we can go back to our brushes. So we can go back, for example, to the inking studio pen. We'll go in with the second color on the middle row. We need to put it up 25% size maybe 40% strength yeah, and we can go in there and we can we can add a tree more manually. It doesn't have to all just be totally the smudge tool. I do think the smudge tool is a rather neat way of actually applying it. But there's nothing stopping us doing it in the more conventional way. In addition, I'm going to tap on that layer in fact and put on alpha lock. Then with the airbrushing soft brush, we're going to move to the third color on the middle row and put it down to like 2% size, 15% opacity. And we probably just need to add some variation of shadow into that tree here. I don't want it to look completely flat. It needs a little, little bit of the rounded shape in there. The alpha lock is helpful. It just allows us to do it more speedily without worrying too much about going over the edge. Just gives it a little bit more depth and believability. Perhaps I'll put it up to 30%. A bit more shadow and texture down here as well. Something like that. Turn the alpha lock off. Then we're going to go back up to layer nine. Again with the smudge, inking, studio pen. 15% size now, 100% opacity. And then we've just got a couple of more foreground elements here that definitely need to just stand out in the mix a little bit better. We take a little bit more care with these. 
again if you want to in addition to the smudge go in there with your brushes and really be in control of those shapes and not just be restricted to what you can push around and that's obviously something that you should do if you want to but I feel like I can get quite a long way just with the smudge tool using the things that are already there so I'm quite happy to do that okay I'm going to go to my layers and create a new layer layer 10 go to the medium brush with an air brushing back to my colors and initially I'm going to use the sixth color on the middle row 2% size and about 30% opacity and I'm just going to build in the suggestion of some more lighter forms and textures here in the foreground initially I'm going to keep it quite vague we've got warmer colors when we get closer to us just a few taps and suggestions of this in that lower section initially stay on the same layer but I'm going to skip a color I'm going to go to the eighth color I'm going to turn it down to 20% opacity 2% size and just aim kind of for the top of those rocks that we've already got perhaps I even turn it down to the lowest part of two percent and just press lightly aim for the kind of the top edge of some of these rocks it's going to be reflecting back some of the light in our scene now we haven't even added the the main light source and kind of holding that back as a real nice dramatic element at the end that's really going to just bring all of this together but I want to set the stage I want to have everything right before we add that element in and then it's just going to bring it all to life so just aiming for the top edges some of these rocks with this color we've got a collection of rocks here perhaps we can just start to add the top edges some of them keep it subtle doesn't need to be overly detailed just really the suggestion can go a long way perhaps we'll go back a color so we've just used the eighth maybe the seventh and same settings on the brush we don't need to change it so it's still at two percent size and 20 percent opacity but we can just add some of this warm color in there so maybe just the top surface of some of these shapes add it to the mix tap it in allow it to be a little bit fragmented and we've not really got much on the ground level of warm so maybe we could imagine some kind of i don't know grass dirt so as well as the actual rocks, we could have some ground level, picking up some of the warmth there, especially as we get into the darker areas, we're going to have more of this warmth coming through as well. Back to the eighth colour. And again, got some real nice bright top surfaces in there as well. Just look for the round shapes that you've kind of suggested already when you were adding them in. Give them a little bit more of a boost with a, a top highlight bring them out a bit more take your time on this section if you want to keeping it pretty loose you can go for something that looks quite believable quite realistic without necessarily getting really bogged down in being extremely precise okay I'm going to go and create a new layer layer 11 and I'm going to go back to the artistic leatherwood brush 3% size I'm going to have to put it down to about 10% opacity and just actually we'll put it down to the lowest part of three percent and just in some of these areas we can start to use this color now to really bring in some lighter textures in the mix we want to add kind of you know real variety of texture in there it can't just be flat looking we want to just build up variety and detail without actually a huge amount of time and labor turn it down even further for these close to bits eight percent add it to the mix just brings to life adds so much more depth in the mix there I think it really helps bring stuff together really works for us go to our colors back one back to the eighth can have that in the mix too actually I don't want it too much down here I want a bit more darkness we'll keep it more for this kind of middle distance Sweep it in there a bit more. That's definitely helping. Just check it. If you feel like it's too strong, well, you can always go to the N on the layer and just dial it back. Find the, the level. I happen to quite like it, but I'm going to dial it back just a touch. Put it back to about 70. So it's still there in the mix, adding plenty that's useful, but it's not too strong. I'm going to create a new layer, layer 12. 
on this new layer, we're going to go back to our colors. I'm going to use the second color on the top row. I'm going to use the soft brush with an airbrushing only at the lowest part of 2% size and 10% opacity. And I want to start building in kind of paths and things that cut through our scene. Just need to be mindful of some of the branches, but it shouldn't interfere too much. I'll zoom in just a little bit. Maybe even put it down to the 1%, only just. And we can start bringing some paths around some of these little mounds, little channels, either where the water kind of runs. You can imagine it sort of twisting and turning, coming this way, finding a direction. Here, for example, cutting through here, creating a channel of sorts. And then maybe another one around that mound a little bit, bringing it this way, maybe twisting in and around here. And obviously, if you put your mounds in different places, then you'll have to just imagine how it could fit around some of the things that you've put in yours. I'm going to put it up to top end of 2% now as we get closer. Allow it to just collect in certain areas. It'll just help exaggerate some of these mounds a little bit better as well then. Something like this. Then maybe back down again, 2%. Maybe there's just going to be some areas here that are just going to bounce the light back. Then I'm going to put the opacity up to 20%. And then, yeah, still keep it low. Maybe back at the 1%. Now we know the general path, we can just fine tune that thin shapes that just cut through there even more, just further exaggerate it when we need it. Just allow some more bits here that are really going to reflect back the light. Now, again, we haven't actually put in the light, so this is going to be difficult to imagine. We'll just go in between some of these branches that are here as well. Perhaps at this stage, we really ought to start bringing in that light. So we'll go back to that, but we'll add another layer, layer 13, unlucky for some. I'm going to change the N from normal to add. With the add blend mode, I'm going in with the airbrushing soft brush. I'm going to set it to maybe 50% size, 5% opacity, and I'm going to go for the red orange on the bottom row. I'm going to decide to put the sun roughly about here. So I'm going to tap on it one, two, four five six seven eight nine ten i think works could do more 11 12 yeah maybe about 12. we'll switch to the yellow put it down to about 20 percent one two three four five six seven eight then we'll go in with the white put it down in fact we'll change brush we'll go to the medium brush we'll put it around the five percent size 10% opacity. Yeah, we'll just start to tap that in a little bit more there. Doesn't need to be a full circle, but you get the idea. Just tap it in. You could do a really nice crisp round shape if you wanted, but I'm happy with the suggestion. Perhaps I'll go back to the red, put it up to 40% size, back down to the 5% strength. Two, three, four, five. I think that brings in a bit more warmth and glow that I think works. Now, if you wanted to play around with that, obviously you can try it with less or more on the slider, but you can also go to the, the whole layer and you can slide and duplicate it, which clearly is too strong in the first instance, but you can go to the top version and slide that back. So you've got one version or you can try to intensify it a little bit more. So for example, if I put that at 50%, then I can go to the adjustments, causing blur, and just blur that in to about 40. And then I've got with or without the extra layer and level. So I'm going to have it with actually. I quite like the real intense. So I put it up to I think about 40% looks about right now. On the initial layer, I'm going to go back in with this soft brush with an airbrushing and I'm going to go back to the yellow. I'm going to put it down to 5% size, 5% opacity. And I'm just going to have it building off the edge of our scene a little bit more. I don't care if it slightly interferes with the, the castle, that's fine. It is a pretty much a strong light source still, so that's okay, I think that works. I think I'm gonna go and, well, I'm gonna stay on layer 13, in fact. 
back in with the medium brush with an airbrushing. I'm going to go for the eighth colour on the middle row. I'm going to turn it down to 2% size and 20% opacity. And yeah, I'll zoom in just a bit more. We definitely need some of the light from our scene coming through into the, the ground layer. So 2% size, only just the lowest part of 2%. And we'll just bring some of these highlights into the, the ground. And then just put it up to slightly higher on the 2% size, 30% strength. And yeah, just a bit more of a suggestion here in the foreground. Just so we've got something nice to really balance out the light in the scene. Like so. I'm going to go back to the red orange, really turn it down to about 10% size, 2% opacity. And maybe just some of the warmth from the sky should just really be a hint bouncing off the rocks. Maybe 10% is too strong, having said that though. 5%, yeah, and maybe it should be impacting a little bit more. So just a smattering of that colour bouncing off some of the features here. Bring that warmth in, balance it all out a little bit more. I think that makes will make better sense of it. Last thing, I'm just going to go back to the layer 4 that had the castle on. Top version has alpha lock on, so I'll turn that off. Pinch it together with the version underneath. Adjustments, and I'm going to Gaussian blur it to about 2%. Just slightly softens it, and I think that generally works a bit better. Maybe put the alpha lock back on. Go in with the soft brush. Go back to my colours. Now we use that colour. For the castle, we'll use the next colour. So we'll use the eighth colour as a highlight, put it down to the 2% size, 5% opacity. And yeah, I'm just going to bring down some kind of horizontal lines to, I'm not really describing very much, but I just want to get a slightly more hint that there's some architecture in there. You don't really have to really articulate it particularly, but just a hint that there's some geometric things going on in there. It goes a long way. And that really is probably enough. Okay, I'm going to leave this tutorial here at this point. I hope you've enjoyed following along. Do remember to subscribe, check out my other videos. And if you do have a go at any of my tutorials, then tag me on Instagram and I will get to see them. Thanks so much for watching. I shall catch you back here soon. Bye for now.